I'm gonna take this piece of furniture to a whole new level using one simple design element. It's a perfect chance to show you what big chunky furniture can turn into with just a little bit of creativity. Hey guys, welcome back into my channel that's all about finding some old beat up pieces of furniture and turning them into a way that pays my bills. My name is Kara and we're diving head first into this 70s dresser makeover that I picked up at an auction a few months back. It's been sitting in my garage for a while as you can tell and I'm gonna bring you along for the entire process. Chances are you've seen one of these dressers or maybe you own one yourself and I'm gonna show you how you can turn it into something absolutely fabulous and make quite a bit of profit if you're interested in that part, so come on along. First things first, this thing needs a bath. So I got some warm water and some simple green mixed up in my bucket and we're gonna get all of this dirt off. I always clean my projects first because it allows me to see what kind of repairs I might need to do along the way so I can take care of those. Just sort of investigate the piece of furniture a little bit further before I get started. I left the handles on this guy. I usually will take those off first to get clean underneath there, but I had a hard time opening the doors. So I left those on just in case I needed a little backup with opening those drawers to get everything clean and then once I have them off I'll go back and clean off those surfaces. Today I'm using my drill attachment scrub brush. This is a perfect way to get into all those nooks and crannies. This thing was covered in gunk, not only from my garage, but it had been used as a buffet in the past. So it just had lots of just yucky old food and sticky stuff that was in these grooves. So this drill attachment helps get those off. Now I can go in and remove all of my hardware. Some of these were harder to get off because the screws were stripped, but I just kept working at them and eventually they came off. We are gonna totally replace these today, so I'll set them aside. Uh, to get off these little plates right here, I used an upholstery tool and it does really well with these little nails that are in the front. These dated details come off very, very easily with one of these tools, and it really just helps to elevate your piece of furniture and get it out of the 1970s. Okay, one of my favorite parts is digging through these dressers to see if anybody has left me anything. Today, I only found some craft supplies, but I'm dying to know if you guys have found anything interesting lurking in these dressers after you pick them up. Let me know in the comments below. Today I'm using my Festool Rotex 90 sander with a squishy foam abrasive pad attached to this. This will help me get into all the grooves and curves on the bottom part of the dresser. I'm going to sand this part down to bare wood. I find in my Dallas area, especially when I sand down the tops and the bottoms of dresser, exposing some of the bare wood features, that my dressers sell faster for me. So I take every opportunity to do this when I have a dresser that I think will look nice with the sanded details on the bottom. I picked up these sanding grips from Amazon and they're great to get into all these small little spaces that my sander can't reach. I just find the one that fits in the area that I need to sand and then I'll wrap a piece of sandpaper around it and it'll take care of whatever finish is remaining. like somebody's doggy got our corner right over here. So I'm gonna take my Gorilla wood filler and fix that right up. Now that the wood fill is dry, I got out my surf prep sander and smoothed out those corners. I also use this to give a light scuff sand to the body of the dresser. Since I'm dealing with squares, the surf prep is the perfect shape to get into all these angles that are usually really hard to reach. If you're going to paint a piece of furniture, you always wanna do a light scuff sand to make sure that your paint is going to adhere nicely. Okay. 
My goal today, because it is literally so hot outside, is just to get through the top of this dresser. And that should be fairly easy to do with my Festool. So I'm going to start out with an 80 grit sandpaper and see how long it takes me to get through the top of this. This dresser top is solid wood, so I can be a little more aggressive with the sandpaper grit that I'm using. I've got my Festool out, which is more of a professional grade sander. I just gently glide it across the surface. I don't need to press. I let the sander do all of the work, just making sure that I go in the direction of the wood grain. My top has been sanded down, but we're not quite done. So on the top of this, I used an 80 grit on my fest tool, which is really aggressive. So if I just left this as is, not only does it feel really rough, I'm gonna see a lot of pigtails or swirl marks on top of this if I was to just stain it or seal it right now. So I have to go through and make sure everything is nice and smooth to help remove those pigtails. And how you do that is by working up the grits of sandpaper. So I finished this one with an 80. I'm gonna work up to a 120 and then I'll do a 180. And then I might do a 220, it might stop at a 180. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing on the top of this for a finished product yet. So I'm gonna think about that as I'm sanding, but let's start getting all this roughness out. Now that I've made a huge mess with all of my sanding dust, it's time to clean off my dresser. I'm using some mineral spirits on the top and the bottom just to make sure that all of the dust has been removed before I can proceed with the stain. This also allows me to see if there's any pigtail marks from the sander that may have been left behind before I start applying the product. Now it's time for the fun part, let's start painting. I'm gonna make sure that my top and bottom that I sanded are completely covered. That way I don't have to worry about getting any overspray onto them. And I've also decided that there's a certain type of handle that I wanna go with and it's actually gonna work perfect for the hole that was there from the last pulls. So I didn't fill those in as you may have noticed, that's because I'm gonna use them. So I love it when that works out. But let this, let's get this whole thing taped off so we can start painting. For this dresser, I'll be using Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel in the color White Birch. I chose this product because it's an all-in-one paint and it has a built-in primer, which this dresser definitely needs. It would most definitely have bleed through issues if I went with just with regular paint. And the One Hour Enamel has a very strong built-in top coat, so that'll help me eliminate a step. I've got my paint loaded into my HVLP gravity fed spray gun and off we go. My spray gun is attached to a 20 gallon air compressor tank, but I only have this set up you guys because at one point I had to flip about five or six pieces a week just to keep our bills paid. So we invested in some of these things that made this job faster. You don't need to have a lot of this high end equipment if you don't want it. And I have attached plenty of links in the video description to my favorite electric paint sprayers. So you don't have to have this fancy setup if you don't need it. This dresser took two coats of paint for full coverage and on the second coat I'm just making sure to go into all these little nooks and crannies to make sure that everything is painted well.
I waited for the paint to completely dry on the outside until I moved to the inside of the cabinet so that I could start painting that. I felt like this cabinet just would have looked a little strange if I hadn't painted the insides also. So I painted the drawers and all the inside edges as well as the cabinet doors. The paper's off, the paint is dry. I'm loving the way that the sanded top and bottom look on this dresser. The only thing left for me to do is stain the top and bottom of this. I'm so excited to get this one going. I've got a great vision for this one. I can't wait to show you all what it looks like in the end. For the top of this, I'm thinking of using an oil-based stain and this dresser could use a little pre-stain before that happens. It has a, just a bunch of different colors. It feels like it's a little dry. I'm gonna make sure that my oil stain absorbs the way it's supposed to. So we're gonna put some pre-stain on first. I'm using Minwax Pre-Stain. Just one coat of it will be just fine for this project. This is an oil-based product, so I'll use a Minwax stain brush that's specific to oil-based products for this. So if I was to seal this dresser right now, this is what the top would look like. It would get all of those orangey tones brought right back to the surface. So I definitely won't, don't want to do that, but that is the neat thing about pre-stain is that you can see what this would possibly look like if you just went ahead and didn't treat it with any stain and you just sealed it. So this is not the look I'm going for. I'm just giving the wood a little bit to drink before we add that stain so that it penetrates evenly. Now that my pre-stain has had plenty of time to dry, I'm using Minwax Wood Stain in the color Special Walnut. I'll apply this with a foam brush and I only did one coat. I let the product sit on the surface for about three minutes and then I wiped it back with a lint-free cloth. The white paint on the body of the dresser already has a built-in top coat, but the stained top and bottom is still going to need one. I'm applying Minwax One Coat Polyurethane. I like this product because each single coat is equal to three regular coats of polyurethane. So technically, after I apply two coats of this, it's like it has six thin coats already applied. I'll do a light scuff sand in between my poly coats to just make sure that the surface is smooth. I want my hinges to match my hardware, so I'm using some Dixie Belle gilding wax with a small painter's brush on my hinges. I use a wallpaper tool to make sure that I don't touch any of that white paint on the sides. Time to put on the final touches. I designed this whole dresser around these knobs. I just loved them when I saw them on Amazon. I'll link them below if you're interested. They just have these gold um, rims around this geode sort of crystal 
and they are just simply beautiful and I really wanted to just elevate this piece. I think it's probably going to be used as a media cabinet and not as a dresser because it doesn't have shelves in this side over here or maybe a buffet, something like that. So I just thought these would give it just a nice little elevation in somebody's dining room or family room. Let's put these on. These drawers could use a little help, so I got out some Howard's Feed and Wax, and I'll use this on my wax brush and apply all around the inside and the sides to help bring back some extra hydration to the wood. One last look at this 70s style dresser that was in desperate need of a modern upgrade. And here it is now. I almost can't believe that this is the same dresser that I started with. The white paint really helped the details stand out on the drawer fronts while the sanded top and bottom once again made this a fast seller for me. The geode poles added that extra touch of elegance that I was looking for for someone else's dining room. This one sold very quickly for me with multiple offers. And at the end of the day, I got the selling price that I thought this one definitely deserved. I was happy to see it go to its new home. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Be sure to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you never miss a flip. And I'll see you next time on Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.